beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone, so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. We are saying faithful are you Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faith. We are saying, Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. One more time. Faith. We are saying, Lord Jesus, we sincerely thank you. It's an honor and it's a privilege to be gathered tonight in your presence. And Lord Jesus, we pray that your word will change us. We pray that your word will transform us. We pray that your word will lift us. We pray that you will bless us. Let the sick be healed tonight, O God. Let the oppressed be delivered. Change our understandings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please greet one another. Be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Again, we apologize for the sound quality. Our technical department, um, they are doing their best to stabilize the sound. So please bear with us inside, outside. I'll be as clear as possible and I hope that um, we all pay attention. Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll continue on our teaching on the secrets of the kingdom. Tonight will be part 2. I welcome everyone. Um, those following us online, you're most welcome. You're part of us. Open your heart. There's no distance in the spirit. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'd like to start tonight. We have a lot to cover. Just to prepare our hearts before we go into our discussions. This was a vision that Jeremiah had with the Lord. Jeremiah 1, and we'll start reading from verse 4. We're reading down to 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 12. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the womb, 
I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then Jeremiah replies, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Verse 7, But the Lord said unto me, saying, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. He said, Be not afraid of their face, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Now this is the verse of emphasis, 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Verse 10. See, I have this day. Listen, this is God revealing to a man the possibilities that can become of his life if he dares to believe God. How can God give such a prophetic word to a little child who just complained that his major problem was his inadequacy? God acted as if he did not know the boy was talking about the limitation that his age had created for him. He said, see, listen, I have said this day, I have said, uh, I have this day said thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. That is the prophetic word. This is what I want to do with your life. This is how far I want to do business with you. Verse 11, moreover, in continuation, he says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, this is what I want to do with your life, but what is your perception? He says, what seest thou? I have shown you what I see about your life, but what do you see? And then Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then the next verse, he says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast what? Well seen. Please give us any other version, NIV, any other version. He says, Thou hast well seen. There's a version that says, Thou hast seen correctly. I don't know exactly which of them, but just, just give us any other version that has a different rendition. NIV says, you have seen what? You have seen Jeremiah, this is your prophetic destiny. Regardless of your age and your background, regardless of your limitations, I have set you. When? He said, this day. Not when you grow up. In my mind, this day, I have set you over nations to root out, pull down, uproot, build. But then he says, the only limitation to this prophecy coming to pass now is what you can see. And then he says, what seest thou? He says, I see the rod of an almond tree. And then he says, you have seen correctly. On the strength of your correctness, you have authorized me to watch, to see that my word which you have seen and agreed with me must come to pass. He says, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Please give us Amplified. Amplified says, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform. Right? He says, I am alert and active, watching over my word. Hallelujah. He starts by revealing to Jeremiah his prophetic destiny in Christ. Jeremiah begins to lament. Theologically speaking, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. The nature and the character of the anointing upon his life was such that he was always raising a lamentation. And that anointing altered his form to respond to the kind of message that he would communicate. It was a reflection of the burden that was upon him. So oftentimes you would hear him weeping 
as he communicated his thoughts from God. And so Jeremiah as a little boy was being shown a great destiny who at that time never believed that it would come to pass and he began to complain. The same complaint happened with Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Don't turn there. The Bible says when God saw that he turned aside right to see the great sight he said Moses take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. Are we together now? After he showed Moses everything, Moses started complaining and said, but Lord, you know I'm a stammerer. And then his unbelief grieved the heart of God. And God spoke fiercely to him. He said, who created the mouth? If I can show you, I can turn your rod to a serpent. If I can cause fire in a bush, yet not burn, what does it take to heal you of stammering? It says, because you have limited me, I will use you to the degree you believe me. But since the issue of speaking, you did not believe me, I will raise Aaron to be a spokesman. It was never God's intention for Aaron to be Moses' spokesman. He was supposed to be healthy and healed. Are we together? His limitation affected the dimension to which God could find expression in him. Please pay attention to this. You see, every time God calls a man, God does not just begin to use the man because he's called. Because oftentimes, the vessel that God calls is either an unbeliever or having all kinds of thinkings and paradigms that are not consistent with you see that happen to all the patriarchs. Abraham, for a long time, when God began to speak to him about his child coming, Abraham for a long time, listen, he tried to agree, but the reality of his supposed impotency and Sarah's barrenness to a point where Sarah laughed. She laughed when the angel spoke and said she would be the mother of nations. God could not do so much with Abraham until one time God told Abraham, come out. When he came out, he said, try to count the stars. Abraham tried and tried and tried and finally he couldn't count it. He said, so shall thy seed be. And then the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God. He agreed with God. Oh, now I understand what you are trying to tell me. And then the Bible says, it was credited, reckoned unto him for righteousness. It is not just enough to know that God is mighty. Please listen. The dynamics of impact, the dynamics of doing great things for the kingdom does not just lie on the recognition that God is mighty. As great and mighty as God is, if that is the scope of your revelation about him, um, you will be blessed. It will impart reverence and awe, but you will not be able to do much. The idea of his revealing his might to you is so that it can get you to a point where you are convinced about anything he wants to do in and through your life. So that the revelation of his might will swallow away what you may hold to be limitations in your life. Here he meets Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, I want to do business with you. And Jeremiah comes as a young boy says Lord I've heard about you doing great things with people and prophets now you are telling me I'm a prophet but I'm limited my background my ideologies are limiting me and God began to challenge his perception the series that we've been taking on the secrets of the kingdom are an attempt to reveal the working principles of the kingdom I call them secrets or mysteries. The very laws upon which impact in the kingdom is founded. Your ability to understand this thing and agree with God becomes your key to an enviable life of impact. Your inability to understand will limit God greatly in your life. So please pay attention. You see, 
it is the word of God that transforms. But I've shared it again and I'll keep drumming it until it becomes a persuasion. There is a system through which the word transforms people. The word does not transform people just by entering them and doing something magical. No, that's not how the word works. Write this word down, word, W-O-R-D. Is the Greek word logos. And that word logos, it does not just mean the speakings of a man. Right? The, the root word that is translated logos is the word thoughts. Please write it down. Thoughts. Like thinking. Thoughts. Is the word idea. Write it down. Is the word opinion. opinion is the word paradigm paradigm and it is also the word mindset so when we say the word of God we are not just saying the things God is saying no we are saying the, the understandings that construct his mind are you following me now when we say the word of God transforms, that word, word is not just the speakings of God, like his communication from his mouth to you. It means his ideas. It means his ideology. It means God's opinion about everything. Let me tell you how we are changed. When your life consistently keeps realigning to God's own idea about everything, are we together? So you find out what God's perspective is about divine health and about the reality of you staying healthy. And you compare that to your current state. They tell you you have SS. They tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you. But you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you. And so he tells you by his stripes, I am healed. I have been healed. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right, dwells in your mortal body, the Bible says that same spirit will revitalize. Now, that's his opinion. You can be aware of it and still remain sick. Or you can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the word of God come to pass in your life. You see, God is alert ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony it may take a while brothers and sisters but as surely as you correctly believe God give him time there must be a performance in your life say amen I am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again. I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed. That looks very spiritual. It is very evangelical, but it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned. Something in that equation is missing. And this is why people get born again. And they say, I'm born again. I'm a believer. Why are things not changing in my life? Everything I used to suffer before, I'm still suffering them after. And I'll tell you why. Because you see, you receive salvation through faith, an act of God's grace. But there is a partnership with you to activate the realities. The Bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation. Everybody say wells. Not just one. Salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities. Your finances, your health, your life the operation of the spirit in your life your spiritual growth 
it is now left for you through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to walk with the word of God and change your mindset. Please hear me. I am, I am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever. The only difference is the security of his eternal salvation. But as far as the earth is concerned, there will be no, absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned. Are we together? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3. And he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then Jesus responds to Nicodemus in verse 3 of John 3. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you. He said, except a man be born again. He said, he shall not, he cannot see the kingdom. He uses the word see the kingdom. Are we together? Verse 3. Verse 4. Nicodemus responds and says, ah, how can a man now be born again when he is old? Will he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Then Jesus explains his concept. Verse 5, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the spirit, then he switches terminologies. He said, he shall not enter. It's one thing to see the kingdom, but it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom. I call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations. It is one thing to hold the prophetic word of God. It is another thing to enter the experience of it. Between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is a process. That process is your degree of alignment. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. This will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you tonight? I watch people very innocently, well-meaning people, live under the expectations of God and they're not doing anything about it. Some are waiting for God to do something about it. So you hear people call and say, man of God, I don't know what is happening in my life. I serve the Lord, I go to church, but nothing is happening. And the biggest area largely is the area of finances. Nothing is changing. Is God so wicked? No, he's not. There are systems in the kingdom. Everybody says systems. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles. Listen, he gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, maturing, perfecting, building up of the saints. So that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him. God wants to be understood. There is something about the thinking of God that men do not understand. And so he anointed certain people and said, explain to people that I'm not the reason why their lives are that way. There is an understanding they do not have. Listen, he anointed some. He didn't anoint them to be noisemakers. He didn't anoint them to be offering razors. He didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers. He anointed them for the maturing. If you are in the fivefold ministry and you are not contributing to demystifying the kingdom, you are wasting God's time on earth. The role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom. Make it clear. Let the inhabitants, believers understand. By the time they see the spiritual logic to God's system, they will now say, ah, I see. It's not that God is wicked. I never knew that there is a system like this. I never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain. I never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer. I have prayed. I never knew that as powerful as prayer is, it's not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom. So the fivefold ministry, by grace, 
it's not just about their spiritual life there is an anointing that comes upon them and gives them an advantage a superior working of the spirit in their life gives them uncommon understanding to the working knowledge of the kingdom to the end that they will now call believers and say guys i found it i think i've seen the reason why you are not anointed ah uh, it's not just about prayer and fasting your motif and then the person says really i i came from a background that is not so good and um i'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self-worth and you say no i've studied the kingdom and i found out that once your motive is to glorify yourself you cannot have the anointing are you seeing now the fivefold ministry you have edified that person so he goes back in prayer scans his motive and say lord i change my eye my mindset i change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of god that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of god because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week it's not just impartations it's not just encounters but you are receiving realignments the answers to your questions are being dispensed are we together now to the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life now it's up to you to be malleable enough and say lord i am the porter i'm the clay you are the porter mold me to whatever form you can argue and say no i don't agree with this and then continue suffering or you can say look i have i have found the truth and i will adjust i like i like um what's his name that short guy the tax collector zacchaeus when he climbed the tree he was a wicked man he defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector but his motive was sincere. Now he climbed the tree. I know why he was a wicked man. Because of his size. He probably felt that they were looking down on him. And so he had to amass wealth. To cover for something. So the issue was not finances. The issue was trying to cover for inferiority. Are we together? And he climbed the tree to see Jesus. And Jesus said don't climb. It's your house I'm going to. Jesus meets the man. And at once he corrects Zacchaeus mentality he says I didn't come to your house because you are rich I didn't come to your house because you are tall in other words it's not about those things it's about my love and my grace you did not qualify but I came to your house and Zacchaeus said that means there's no need defrauding people at once he changed his mindset are we together now he started returning everything and said ah, my amassing money was not because I like money I was hoping that through it I will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house. Now Jesus has abused my mentality. And he says there's no need for that old thinking. We must be like Zacchaeus tonight. Opening up our hearts. And the moment the word of God comes, you don't argue with it. You see, only foolish people argue with the word of God. Especially when you are not getting results in your life. We live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about. Are we together? Someone who doesn't play football, you see him arguing for three hours. He says, I know how much, how we pay them this amount, meaning his team. And he never contributed anything. And he never wonders and says, come, why is my life not working like the person I'm talking about? People argue all around. Why should doctors go on strike? And the person is not even, a, he's not near medicine, he doesn't know anything. We like talking boldly about things we know nothing about. And that's the danger. We keep venting our ignorance. But when we come to God, he requires that we become silent. That's what Mary did. Martha was busy about commanding and talking. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You are trying to get things done, but one thing is needful and this mary has chosen to do what to sit at the feet there's something about being still in god's presence when he was about to feed the five thousand he said let them sit down 
if you can't sit down there's no bread for you sitting down is a sign of stability he makes me lie down in green pastures oh but joshua selma you i have bills to pay tomorrow sit down in green pastures your running around is not the solution let me tell you something when we go through things we think god is disturbed the way we are disturbed and we say god keep responding on the go and god says i'm not going to talk to you prove you trust me by sitting down in five minutes that sickness you are trying to rush and call a doctor outside and god is saying just sit down i can address this issue you can't even raise 3.5 million to go to india so why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting here I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I respect the word of God. I will never argue with his perspectives. I'm not too proud to admit I am wrong. No, 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 no. no. Once the word of God challenges my ideologies, I say, Lord, I agree with you. You cannot be wrong. So I'm the one who is wrong here. Anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny. Do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of God? Until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way. Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now and there's no husband. Oh yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God is saying, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice. Let me tell you something. Time never changes anything. Time only reveals. The day you align to the word of God, that's the day your change starts. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, you are about to speak to me. I'm not rebellious. My heart is open. Go ahead and pray inside and outside. The online community, open your heart and let's pray. Shiba Kato Saba. Shiba Kurato Sapre Teketi Baladaba. Mambros Kalabri de Shikrea Suparato Sabrati Alabadadi. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit. The next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom. How the kingdom works. The grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge. Not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself. Understanding that produces consistent results. And there are so many of them. We've shared a lot of them in this house. But in this series, I took six of them. Six irrefutable laws of the kingdom. That when you walk with, please hear me. When you walk and live by these truths. When you allow the word of God to superimpose your thinking. And it becomes your conviction. And you are diligent to act. I promise you there will be a performance. 
Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day, not choose the ones you like, to do and observe, keep, live by all these laws that I give unto you. Right? It says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you. Then he begins to tell you, you will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the country and all of that, all those blessings. But they are tied to your obedience. They are tied to faith. They are tied to your response, which is a product of your conviction. When you don't believe a thing, you cannot live by it. You cannot act upon it. And so we took some laws. The first was the law of encounter. And we spoke about complete surrender. That was the first discussion. That complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man. That every time you see a man, a woman, a man of God, walking in unusual strange dimensions of graces the issue is not criticizing them the issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake there are people who have this understanding the moment they see things they do not understand they see certain superior levels of graces they begin to criticize it once it is outside of their frame of belief how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant? You see that? And they come up with, you would, you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics. They will say, where is the woman? Bring her. Let's see her and the baby. And let's have a doctor certify that it was 35 years. As if the man forgot when he married his wife. You see how people think. So every time people see unusual levels of grace, they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that is not as powerful as that. But the key is complete surrender. Never forget this. Forget about great levels of the anointing when you are still conscious of yourself, your reputation, your anointing, your sermon, the quality of your revelations. You will never touch the anointing that way. Are we together? God will only truly anoint men who become reflectors. Men who have paid the price to be his image bearers. They are reflectors of him, not themselves. A man of God who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and, 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 and keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life. Because God is not interested in men making a name for themselves. The name they make is his reward. By uh, his reward for them being reflectors of him. Hallelujah. I have seen a lot of preachers come to me. And every time they come, their first question is, what is the secret to the anointing? And they think it's just some magic formula. I'll say this and that and that. Eat bitter leaf for one week. Add cabbage. After that, pray. Just put cross on your head for three days and get into power. That's charm. That's, that's not the way it works. It's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit. No, those who use that know what they are doing. But those who, you see, true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship. It's a product of relationship. You cannot receive from a God you do not know. You can receive from a herbalist you do not know. You can receive from a native doctor you do not know. You don't even have to know them. But if you want to receive from God, the first assignment is not your hand, it's your heart. My son, give me your heart. So we discuss that complete surrender as the key to unusual grace. Number two was the revelation that realities our only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater listen to this the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart his mind so he is i told you this law it is the law that births realities in our world 
that your physical life is only a looking glass are we together the quality of your life spiritually and otherwise is a reflection of something happening inside your life is not authorized to change until your mind changes anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life genesis 11 god came and saw nimrod the son of cush mobilized certain people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building and then the bible says god came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built god said as far as he was concerned they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here your life will never change until your mind changes let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind if one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you and until it leaves you and you become poor then your mind will interpret it as you being normal your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs are we together yeah. so you must make sure that transformation happens first within you don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment i gave an illustration one time when i was speaking about transformation have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you use for three years is still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it you always ironed it you dash the person the clothes and in two weeks a shirt that was white has become brown the person's mind is showing on the shirt are we together now yes you give that person a shirt Ord ordinarily you wear it for two days and wash it or one day and wash it but this guy has worn it for two weeks why because in his mindset he says it is not necessary neatness is unnecessary it's only um, an emergency and once i am not sick there is no reason why i should be neat that's what his mindset is telling him so he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away if the shirt has love written on it you see that the o has faded or disappeared two weeks it's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the md and make the md a security man you know most people see wealthy people for instance and say how can we be walking we are the ones sweeping opening gate there is a wicked man sitting under ac just signing papers and his salary is 10 million and you are here receiving fifteen thousand. no it's not the suit it's not the ac it's the mindset if you want to know switch them take the security man and keep him on that seat let me tell you what he will do we've discussed it right he will still stabilize us he will drink what is in the fridge because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it careful hallelujah that's all right let me have your attention please. so with that kind of thinking look up please with that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding what happens to the person you know, so it has to be in your life as it is in your mind people try to change their physical environment we use all kinds of things to change our mindsets so somebody can wear a suit and feel like a ceo but there's there's nothing ceo there you see so there's nothing to deliver you can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say who are you, you say my name is this and that i am the ceo what is your value i don't understand what you're saying because for you to be a ceo there's something you should have got to you ignored it and thought it was all suits how we fool ourselves we hate adjusting our minds but we love trying to fake it in the physical and nigerians can fake things we can fake wealth you can fake as you people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time whereas in their mindset they are living in abject poverty and they will not make adjustment and sometimes pastors in a bit to encourage people this is what we tell people act like your future and what 
what I understand what we mean. We mean change your mindset. But someone now says, okay, I'm hearing, act like your future. And hot son, the person wears suit and tie and is moving. Say, I am a CEO. He carries a bag. And he thinks, I'm acting like my future. And he mocks himself for 10 years. Whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future. You must think like your future to become like the future. So the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira. The idea is not to create a fake outer environment. The idea is to begin to give your mindset new information. And inevitably, trust me, trust me people, I know what I'm telling you. Inevitably, your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset. Our physical environment is only a mirror. Have you seen someone stand before a mirror? Assuming I stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um, on my head or on my shoulder and I'm trying to remove it, will I put my hand inside the mirror to change it? I adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts. The man in the mirror is this physical you. The real you is the person within. If that adjustment does not happen, forget about trying to create change. That's why people create temporal changes. And then their mindset superimpose it. Are we together? So, I try to act as if I'm a Christian. I'm not serious about God and I'm not serious about the world. But simply because I want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia. And she has told me if I don't come for koinonia, no relationship. I come and I fake it. Are we together? While they are singing, I watch people raise their hands. I'm not raising it out of conviction. I don't even know what is happening. And after five minutes, I say, my dear, I'm leaving this place. Because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock. You don't worship God by eight o'clock. And you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening. While worship is going, you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free. I don't have money, but somebody will buy the beer free. But you are in church just by force. It's the same thing pastors try to do to people. Be nice. Don't be bad. Why are you a bad girl? Change. If she could change, she would not be that way. There is an understanding. The key is not to tell people to change. The key is to show them how to change. Hallelujah. As it is within you, so will it be in your life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, he says, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind. Let me tell you why many of us are confused. We are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive. You finish listening to a worship song right now. Two hours of strong worship. Are we together? The moment you finish, you have the selection. You have gospel songs. You have uh, all, all the others, you know, songs like that. Well selected. So when you want to feel spiritual, you finish listening to the gospel songs. And then you announce a okay, kite. Enough of church, I beg. Let me just hype myself and enjoy and now you put another thing. You are, you are diluting what you spend time. You finish listening to the word of God. And all of a sudden, you just put a pornographic movie. And you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing. At the end of it, you prayed for two hours. But right now, you don't even know what your mind is thinking again. You, 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively. But all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight. Because you are feeding it. Are we together? You are feeding it. You go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping. You sit from 10 o'clock till 2, talking about people, tearing down people. And afterwards, you go back and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking. You have to protect your heart. Build a wall around your heart. Don't allow just anything to find expression. No. No. There are things I will never be found associating with. Not be, I don't care whether they are good or bad, honestly. I am on a project. I am well aware 
of how much my life would have changed if I were more renewed than I am now. And I'm on a consistent project to renewing myself. I'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness. Are we together now? Please be careful what you allow in your mind. You allow people keep talking to you. You sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months and say, four months, millionaire, there are thieves in Nigeria. I saw one. He's my neighbor. Let me, I'm just waiting for that guy. And you sit down. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are associating wealth with negativism. Your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy. So somebody becomes a millionaire in four months. Instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he, did he practice? What sacrifice? What happened? No, we don't argue. We say, no way. It took me 20 years. Your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf. How can a young man become a millionaire in one month? 20 years, one, uh, four months. It took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver. That's how long it took you to be in the labor room. 20 years. Are we together? There are different ways to get to Lagos. You can trek. You can ride a bike. Are we together? You can follow a luxurious bus. You can have your private car. You can fly. You can take a private charter. You can have your own jet. You will arrive in different conditions. Don't, don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition. No. That guy who trekked from when Buhari won, that gentleman, they, they appreciated him, but have, did you see the guy? Yes. That's how life is with many people. We use all kinds of formulas that we think will take us to the place of destiny. And when we find people applying superior kingdom principles, rather than finding out, we argue and we say, no, this is the only way I know. That means that's the only way there is. Tell somebody there is another way. Hallelujah. Say there is another way. Please give us 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the last verse. 1 Corinthians 12, the last verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is changing us. 1 Corinthians 12, the last verse, please. Everybody read. It says, but covet earnestly the best gift. Uh-huh, read on. And yet, I show unto you a more excellent way. Say there is a more excellent way. The fact that you are doing it the way you know to do, brothers and sisters, hear me, does not mean that is the only way. You can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary, in Bible school. But that does not mean that is the ultimate way. There is a more excellent way. Are we together? You can manage your family the way you know. You can try to know God the way you have been taught. But there is a more excellent way. And that's the way that the Lord is teaching us. That it is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. It will always take partnership. Because the kingdom of God is made of systems. And every system defines the operation of God in a particular way. There is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom. There is the economic system of the kingdom. Are we together now? There is the family system of the kingdom. The area I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry. And while I was teaching them, I taught them something. I told them, I said, when the devil comes to your life, he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand. That becomes his entrance point in your life. So if Satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person, he will not start his attack that way. He finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word. You have already understood the relevance. Yet, you are not an excellent person. He uses your lapse of lack of excellence as the access point to your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Jesus said this, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Satan tried to access the life of Jesus through different systems. At first, he tried to terminate him at birth. It didn't happen. He refrained himself. 
waited for Jesus when he was tired he now came trying to use hunger turn these stones into bread it didn't work he tried to use pride and ego are you not the son of God he shall put his angels charge over you even tried to use spirituality Jesus defeated him and the Bible says he left him for a season watch this he now tried to come through Peter are we together to prohibit Jesus from talking about his death and resurrection Jesus detected it and rebuked him finally he came through Judas and he was allowed so that scriptures will be fulfilled not because Jesus did not know the Bible says after they took the communion Satan entered Judas and he went and caused made the arrangement for them to kill Jesus Christ the systems of the kingdom the area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you in. and so I'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom to the end that we will be fortified not just spiritually not just financially not just maritally there will be complete and balanced growth number three I shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies there is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for helping men surmount mountains in their lives and it's found in Proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7 it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and there's a promise tied to it, it said if you acknowledge him he shall direct your path right then you read verse 7 it says be not wise in your own understanding fear the Lord and turn away from evil but the verse of emphasis is verse 6 in all thy ways acknowledge him and she shall direct your path that every time you are confused in your life which is normal for men we are human beings we do not have all the knowledge there are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you listen to me please there are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains financial mountains marital mountains educational mountains career mountains spiritual mountains health mountains there are all kinds of mountains before you and Jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains he says every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad you are confused you don't know what to do he says forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him flaunt his majesty remind him of the things he has done before and he's authorized to create a pathway number four the law of mastery and competence this is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards the kingdom operates on a reward system this is one of the fundamental laws of wealth one of the fundamental laws of relevance one of the fundamental laws of influence one of the fundamental laws of greatness the law of competence proverbs 18 16 it says the gift of a man I told you to write many things as similes of that word gift the value of a man the contributions of a man are we together the abilities of a man when well refined developed and deployed will make room for him will make room for him regardless of your background koinonia regardless of what you know and what you do not know when you find your giftings the abilities that God deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them they will bring you all kinds of rewards tangible rewards what are tangible rewards money and all the physical privileges that come and intangible rewards the sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of God and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity it brings fulfillment but it happens only at the mercy of competence I'm building tonight right here when a man finds his God-given ability Koinonia please listen to me I plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ pay attention 
when a man finds his God-given ability, he has found his way out of mediocrity. He has found his way out of failure. He has found his way out of pain and tears. But your gift in itself, although it came from God, it always comes as a seed. It always comes unrefined. Listen to me. It will take that gift passing through a process of refining, of development. Are we together now? And of, of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for. Nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that God is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer. Have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company? This is the area I have problems with men of God. Because we never challenge people to be at their best. They just bring little prophets offering for us and we prophesy and we lie to them. Because we know that their gifts the way it is. Someone comes to meet you and says, I want to have a, a construction company. How many years experience do you have? Nothing. Do you have a very credible engineer? No. You are the one who is the CEO of the company. What did you study? You studied fashion. How does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges? You are an entrepreneur. Do you have the required engineers? No. But he's my tribesman. And they now bring one million for the man of God and the man of God said, go. It is done. I told you last week, it's not done. Don't let anybody fool you like that. Favor is when preparedness meets opportunity. Favor, hear me, is when preparedness meets opportunity. You want a job, but please and please, before I prophesy to you, have you done your homework? Are we together now? You are trusting God for a job somewhere. Before I speak to you, have you learned people's skills? Have you mastered your art? Do you know your onions? Can you deliver competently? Don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot, you have not done your homework. It's a mockery on God. So God gives you an opportunity. You have not mastered your cooking and they now tell you cook for 300 people. The name of your company is Goodness Catering Services. That it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered. You now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid. He did something to you as a favor because you are his church member, but on your part you could not deliver. Before you start crying for favor, make sure you have something in your hand. Well enough to deliver father give me a good husband have you mastered the art of being a good wife when was the last book you read and when was the last time you read it are we together oh god give me children what have you studied about parenting or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes in have you studied on parenting you see, many times, let me tell you something. Get my teaching, Activating Seasons of Favor. The Lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities because time and chance, opportunities and seasons happen to them all. One day, like the hand of a clock, your turn will come. It must come. But the key is to prepare so that the day you enter the presence of greatness, you will never have to return again. Say amen competence i like you to say after me in the name of jesus i am gifted oh come on coin on your chorus it in the name of jesus i am gifted i am anointed the ability of the spirit is at work in me and i cooperate with god by refining those gifts knowing this that a day of favor must come to me. And I do not want to abuse that day. One day in the life of any man, listen, 
one day in the life of any man you will be seated before your destiny helpers it's up to you to deliver to the latter are we together i dread any time in my life when i will stand in the presence of greatness and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door i dread the time when koinonia will be hundred thousand members and yet i do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds do you think god will give you there are certain people god pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage there are people who can only manage anything less than one million they have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources god will not give you 100 million if you saw it in a dream wake up it's a dream it is your capacity that will make it happen in your life I, Daniel, understood by books. You must buy the truth and sell it not. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Write it down. Refine your gifts. Don't just identify them. Refine them. They are the keys. They are your bailout. They are your bailout. The concept of something for nothing is wickedness. Hello? Koinonia, listen to me. The concept of something for nothing is wickedness. Everybody rises according to their contribution. Our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution. To want to become a millionaire, giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness. That's why thieves are called thieves. That's why we arrest them when we find them. Why? Because they use guns. They don't contribute anything, yet they want your money. Are we together? So they bully you. They say your money or your life. Bill Gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution. You know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked? They get their money by corruption. We cannot see the value commensurate to what they have. We see a man who is a local government chairman. We do not see any developmental strides. We don't see any entrepreneurial acumen. Yet we see billions in his account. We know that that is questionable. This is the basis upon which people are accused. You don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing. If I can provide the value of a billionaire, you should not have a problem with billions in my account. Are we together now? Yes. The question I want to ask you is, that seat of greatness you want, present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there. Nothing for many of us. Are we seeing now? A woman once asked me to pray for her. I think she owned a school. And she said things were not working. The students were leaving. And she said a prophet came around to pray. He fed son. He prayed and told her there's something. Somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a uh, charm in in the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper when the woman told me that thing i said madam i minister deliverance to people but i can tell you this is nonsense that prophet that uh, the, the 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 prophet man i may not call him fake but i know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps it's in the Bible. He said, we are not like wizards, right? That peep. They peep into the realm of the spirit. There is no accurate knowledge. They summon strange spirits to deliver information for them, which can be aberrated. So he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well. Why should I send my child to her school? Your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence. You don't know that colors are communicators. check shirt check check short knicker that's a school uniform for instance and then you put red or blue socks carelessly done with one tailor who is not competent but is a brother to the principal and so you allow the person
to sow anything you see someone very tall and his 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 his, his, his trouser is, is just at, around his lap no excellence what of the teachers the teach i'm not i'm not being insulted but the teachers themselves look at the result of the person teaching them accounting f9 in accounting f9 in maths f9 in economics f9 in commerce he's the chief he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences why because they attend the same church i'm telling you why people fail there is a place for the spiritual but never think incompetence will be substituted for, um, or competence will be substituted for for prayer now it is that kind of school you finish everything the name is not good there is no intelligent pta uh, uh, parents teacher forum they are always fighting you are increasing the school fees every term every session but there is no commensurate development you write yx 60 people write junior yx only five have up to five credits the students are not so dull the teachers don't understand what they are doing it is that kind of school you write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say lord that school must change and every time you pray god tells you go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city usually those kinds of people they fight those who are doing well because they think they are colleagues we all have schools what is what is the name of your own you are not delivering let me tell you what keeps people incompetent don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing that that means you are colleagues are we together yes there are men of god i see i know i honor them with my life i know that we are all men of god but i know there are levels and there are standards i will not sit down and say oh this no 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 everybody is clapping for joshua selman the same way they are clapping for me i'm clapping for others too are we together now but this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same results? No. But in our arrogance, we say, we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn there is a saying in house that the person who can ask for road will never get missing the the keys to make us competent are there it just takes meekness but many of us are too embarrassed to improve we are too ashamed to seek knowledge especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us less privileged than us so we don't submit ourselves to listen I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFN. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? Excuses that are reflectors of our, our lack of desire to move forward. I made up my mind it's a vow i have made with destiny that in every area where the lord wants me to excel i will master it and i will lead the field in the name of jesus christ if you are a preacher here i'm speaking to you don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying joshua selman you are the lion of the tribe of judah they are destroying you thank god for their applause but go back and say it's time to walk be committed to personal development you are a businessman you hit your first million you don't cross your leg and say my soul find rest no you say the journey is just about to start thank god for all those things but i need to learn who needs to mentor me who needs to build me champions are champions because they keep moving mediocre are mediocre because they stop moving give yourself to continuous improvement continuous development Number five. The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. 
Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 please media help us Mark 2 1 to 5 I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions giants in the kingdom will you open up the gates gates open up the door Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, Many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says, they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their name but mentions what they did. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. It says, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four. That means four people carried him. Four destiny helpers carrying a man. It says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, what did they do? They uncovered the roof where he was, Jesus now, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. When you read on, he was eventually healed. Watch this. Write this down. Destiny helpers are people who have been anointed, assigned, and commission to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny anointed assigned by God commission when Elijah was about to die of hunger in Brook Cherry the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said go to a city called Zarephath he said dear I have commanded a widow the widow never act, she never acted like she was commanded but God told the prophet I have commanded I have compelled her spirit to respond to you listen no matter how hard working you are no matter how competent you are in the dealings of God with men a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you please come Shadrach Shadrach is right at this level everybody please see watch this call this a level in life i am up here standing his desire is to come up here now he has done well he's played his part well suited but he has the gift the grace the anointing but no access are we together now he needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers listen to me the assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life please i want you to listen because some of us are at this level right now the truth is you have refined your gift the truth is you are competent but you are saying lord where is that man where is that woman who must speak? There are three kinds of destiny helpers. Please write this quickly. Three kinds of destiny helpers. Sorry, Shadrach, you have to stand. Okay, go ahead. Just, just write. Number one. The first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connectors. Second Kings chapter 5. Divine connectors. Please give us from verse 1 to 5. Second Kings 5 from verse 1 to 5. Learn this. What I'm teaching you is not basic at all. It's not simple at all. 
is a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants the first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors who are they let me tell you who they are they are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you but they can they have access they can point you to those who can lift you they do not have the anointing to heal you but they can take you to a church where you'll be healed they do not have money to give you but they can take you to somebody who can help you they are called divine connectors their assignment is to connect you they don't have the power in themselves to help you are we together but they have access to an information that you need here is a situation a great man called naaman the bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of syria listen he says he was a great man with his master an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance to syria he says he was also a mighty man in valor but there was an area in his life lacking he was blessed spiritually blessed maritally but financially something was still hanging are we together he had excelled in every area but certain areas were still hanging and a miracle is about to happen to him verse 2 and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought, listen, away captive out of the land of Israel. Who? A little maid. You see, no name again. No name. Take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector. It says a little maid and she waited upon Naaman's wife. She was a PA to the big man's wife. One day something happened. Next verse. She said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. That's a destiny connector. The little girl said, I know I'm a, I'm a captive, but while I was in Israel, there is a man. I know that that man is powerful. I pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet i know he will be healed these are destiny connectors sam i know you have this talent but i was browsing and i saw that there is an international music auditioning i'm not a musician but i thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his lord saying Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land there of verse 5. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go and I will send a letter. So on and so forth and all of that. And when you read down to verse 10, Naaman, on account of, in fact, no, 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 let, let's go to verse, let's go to verse 8. Can we go to verse 8? There's something I want to point out there. Listen. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes because the king was afraid right and then elisha said let him come now and see whether and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel read on and so on and so forth elisha came go to verse 12. listen look at this he had told him to go and bath in the river of jordan now historically speaking jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean very dirty are we together so the man felt at my status to go and bath watch this he says are not all of these rivers you know better and all of that so he returned and went away in rage this is where i'm trying to go he was at the point of his breakthrough but in anger he was about to miss his miracle the destiny helper comes again and the, and his servants came near and spoke to him listen and said my father if the prophet had paid thee to do something worse will you not do it 
somebody came and spoke to him are we together again and said no no let me encourage you and that man went to bath when you read 14 and 15 he bathed seven times and his skin the bible records was like that of a child that of a baby destiny connect us i pray for you in the name of jesus christ that god will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary but they carry extraordinary things are we together now they may be your younger ones they may be children they may not have the ability to bless you but i pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you in the name of jesus christ the second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence the second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence mark chapter 15 verse 43 please give it to us very fast let's let's be fast about it mark 15 verse 43 it says joseph of arimathea this was jesus christ now right we, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting i'm reiterating it for so that we can believe Josh, um, joseph of arimathea an honorable counselor the bible says which also waited for the kingdom of god came and used his honor or influence he went boldly before pilate and craved for the body of jesus listen there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men you need them a time must come in your life where you will need them are we together do you know that please come assuming this lady is looking for a job are we together this lady is looking for a job she's tried and tried but the privilege god has given me to lead this ministry we have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of god in my life and i appreciate it i can use my influence are we together and meet somebody someone like our daddy prof and say daddy please there is a lady here honestly she can be good for a secretary i endorse this lady i know that this lady is good daddy please do you have any friend that can give her a job do you know he may not have planned blessing her but because my influence is a middleman between two of them he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation and this girl will get a job are we together god bless you there are men of influence those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence let me tell you what they are telling you remain where you are forever because it will take a joseph of arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence i've shared the story here in koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to nda but there was a height level that he needed to 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 get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the emir of zazo here the emir of of, of of zari and all of that um came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter he said they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir of zazo has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act he knows what that means <laughs> to his daily bread to his career are we together look let me tell you influence is a force that moves men to their destiny don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people i pray for them in my life i want them in my life i desire them in my life one of the priceless things i learned about my father my father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere if it's police station my father knows somebody in the police station prisons my father knows someone if your car breaks down no matter the brand there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows it's an attribute in his life i covet earnestly are we together who do you know brothers and sisters that can bail you out of this wicked nigeria you can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you 
may God raise a man of influence to call him and say, if you touch my pastor, I touch your job. Influence. You need influence in this life. You see, the people in the world are smarter than believers. We sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves. You need influence. Bishop Oyedepo is great today. I know he's great as an anointed man. But it's not just because he's an anointed man. He's a pastor of influential people. Are we together? If the managers of five banks are members of your church, are we together? Your chief financial secretary is the, is the, is the CEO of Zenith Bank. Will you be poor as a church? Please answer me. Will you be poor as a church? Don't say it does not matter. Keep fooling yourself. It matters big time in this country we live in. You need men of influence. Many of our parents ignore them. That's why they are suffering. May God make you a destiny helper to someone. That one letter from you to say, no, no, I know this person. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want God to make me a man of influence. I am very unapologetic about it. I want God to connect me to politicians, to connect me to business people, to connect me to diplomats. I'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter. I'm just a righteous man. I have fortified myself. I will still be holy with them and I will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the former president, I heard a very funny story. I will only say part of it. The former president uh, of Nigeria did something funny to one prominent um, will I call him father elder statesman in Nigeria he did something funny to him and um, within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we had you did so and so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified I'm not just this. Ah! May God make Koinonia a place of influence. Please answer that amen well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Men of influence. The key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence. Not just evangelism. That you are surrounded by men that matter. So that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence. Uh -uh. Influence gives you a voice. The Bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength. It's, it's a fortification. You need men of influence around your life. There's too much wickedness. Who do you know in the army that God can use to speak for you? Who do you know in the military? Who do you know in the banking system? Who has God connected you with? In the area of medicine if someone is about to die do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to india you need men of influence say i need men of influence open your mouth and pray in one minute send them to my life send them in my life send them in my life Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before. Once NYSC starts, there is no hope of you being redeployed. So they told you, in my presence, I have seen people four months in NYSC. Carried away, not marriage, not pregnancy. Somebody used his influence and said, I need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area. It was quietly done. In ABU, you call it third list. But there are many lists according to what influence can bring. Are we together? There are people whose admission letters are printed overnight. Jam irrespective. Come on now. Cut off point nonsense. A voice is the cut off point. 
influence and God brings them if you do not have men of influence you will join the queue in life and the queue does not move that's the sad thing about the queue in life there are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move even when they have it they won't give you chance they will stay there till they die so the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible how many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land do you know there are territories that antagonize christians they will not give you land but they had influence they spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land and they say please give my pastor land as an allergy as much as he wants that's what influence can do may god give you influence in the name of Jesus there are many churches in Zaria who want to buy large properties there are there are lands around but they may never give churches they may never give certain people because they say one somebody holds it no 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 you watch what will happen in the name of Jesus with koinonia let me tell you everybody on earth is a tenant nobody has a right to bully anybody for land God will give us land that will shock you it will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say pick it will happen by the spirit i'm not one of those fearful people who will not move the earth is the lord but you see it's not just the voice of heaven from uh, the voice of god from heaven god will connect you to somebody i have prayed for many unbelievers and i'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day i need their help i prayed for them if god gives them breakthrough tomorrow we we'll say please we need your influence to buy 10 hectares of land for koinonia and they will say let it be done if they refuse the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us influence our parents rejected men of influence now they are paying for everything just to give somebody admission in secondary school see how we fast and pray whereas one signature can answer that prayer i pray for you from the depth of my heart any man who needs to enter your life who has the influence you require may the God that I serve bring them into your life may the God that I serve bring them into your life please hear me every man on earth answers yes sir to someone are we together if they refuse to tell you go ahead find who they answer yes sir to and they will answer yes sir to you too he said for i am a man under authority i am under authority so there are others under my authority there is no man who is no matter how people make themselves gods don't be threatened by men's noise they only talk every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up when the lion shows up he doesn't say keep quiet they will be silent whoever has robbed your family of what is their due whoever has closed the door for you there are many of us your qualification can give you a job but the people endorsing you are like you so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a door that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people. I've had the privilege of meeting very influential people. And I have seen the way doors open just like that. I've seen doors open just like that. I remember one time, one of our chairman, um, the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army. I remember when he was a colonel, sometime in Lagos, you know, we are so close and every time from the airport he will send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flash light and they salute them access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself he drove me sir with his car 
we went to passport office in Abuja, in Kaduna. I even did the first one in Abuja. So it was even complicated. In 30 minutes, how many minutes? About 30 minutes or so, they brought out my passport for me. And I was ready to go. The woman who did it, the madam there, last year i went to minister in nigerian immigration their fellowship their chapel when i went there there was a woman they had moved her there and quickly i made friends with her because my passport would expire again <laughs> keep laughing at me don't lend the wisdom in what i'm saying listen when you see men of influence don't resent them you resent them because pastors have taught you. They are all unbelievers. Don't mind them. Mind them. Mind them. Just make sure their influence does not destroy you. But please mind them. Don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that. But the greatest key is to become an influence yourself. When you become an influence, you become a magnet to influential people. Oh, that's why I love the anointing goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90% of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you. They come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent. You will hardly find people who love you for who you are. But in your life, there are men you will find who love you for who you are. They will stay with you. For time's sake, 1 first, first Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. Please, let's hurry up. 1 Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, yeah, na 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 na. Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen, one of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you. When things are not going well they leave you alone when you are lonely but there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men are we together faithful men he said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men. Verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, one that was in debt, everyone who was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became what? Captain over them in a cave. How do you submit to a man who is a failure? How do you submit to a ministry that does not have result? How do you remain loyal to a business that is not working? It's called faithfulness. There are such men. There are such men. We were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry. Not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened. And I said they are called faithful men. 
They are not called men of God. They are not called assistants. They are called faithful men. May God position them in your life. How many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone? There are some of us, when our parents were wealthy, there were all kinds of relatives. Now, right now, there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men. There are psychophants around in our world. But there are people called faithful men. The Bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave. 400 people in a cave. There was no hope. It's not like they were there hoping things would change. They were saying, if we die, let's die with you. God. If you're a leader here, please let me give you a secret. Every time you pray, don't just pray for gifted people. Pray for faithful men. A faithful man is better than a gifted man. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Hallelujah. Verse 3, and then we'll stop. And David went thanks to the... Okay, let's just stop there. I'm not going to read. Let me give you the next verse to read. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. That will tell you the whole story all till... But, but then we are looking at something else. First Chronicles 12. Let's read 1 to 3, then move to verse 38. First Chronicles 12, 1 to 3, then 38. Let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men. Look at this. He said, now these are the men that came to David in, Zig, in Ziklag. I'm fast forwarding now. He says, while he kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish, he said they were among the mighty men. What did he call them? helpers of the war so they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight he trained them they remained there they have now become helpers of the war and it lists all of them go to verse 38 for time's sake read with me please everybody hallelujah mm. all these men of war that could keep rank do you know what that hold on that means when David told them, you stand as a musician, they remained as a musician because David said it. Absolute loyalty, regardless of results. Are we together? He says, they came with what? A perfect heart. Nobody was doing eye service. They loved him genuinely. They were willing to die for him genuinely. He said, to make David king, their determination they said david you don't need to bribe us we we are alive to make sure the word of the lord in your life will come to pass do you know god can send this man with you everything in your life can nose dive and they will come and say jimmy if everyone will leave you i will be here for you whether your wife gets pregnant or not i am here for you how many pastors are hiding many things in their lives? Because if members know, they will run away because they are selfish people. But there is a grace. I truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man. Watch the kinds of people you are attracting. And don't be too quick to say these people are my friends. We even say they are my right hand men. A friend is made for adversity. Adversity separates people. You will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the Jews and crucify you tomorrow. But this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a Jimmy becomes that CEO. With a perfect heart to make sure that Abiodun gets to that place of destiny. So even if they would die in the process, no problem. There are such men. Listen, he said, and all the rest also in Israel were of one heart. To make David king. They threw away their own personal agenda. And said David. For as long as you are not king. We will not rest. Do you have such people in your life? Who will take responsibility. And say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job. I will not rest. You can call and say Kai uncle you have tried. Don't worry God is faithful. He said God is faithful. I take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed. And they will run left, right, and center. While you are sleeping, they are awake. They are saying, help my son. When they captured Reverend Ntia, Ntia is in Akwaibo, Ibom Uyo. When they captured him, Dr. Paul Enenche said he could not sleep. 
because it's not just because he was his spiritual son he said no he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around called his spiritual parents Oyedepo, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said, you better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now. Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to a quiet bomb and went to prophesy on that soil and said, I command that my son be released. Faithful man. Is it not enough to pray from your house? When a man leaves his house to your own to help you, it's no longer just friendship. It's called faithfulness. Pray in one minute. Lord, bring faithful men. I'm tired of false people in my life. Take what I'm saying seriously. I'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless. Faithful men. Faithful men. Even when they know what you have done, they say it will never change my relationship with you. Pray. There are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant. There are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men. It's a terrible thing to live your life building men to and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Shabaka labako sotobai. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die, but I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. I like you to pray especially those of us who are trusting God for marriage by the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you because of figure eight you are in trouble by the time you have a woman who just likes you because you have money or you are working in shell you are in trouble lift your voice and say faithful men faithful men faithful men pray faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven i am an intercessor for you and your ministry god is i've never given this woman one naira God is my witness. You can ask the protocol and all those who follow me. They don't even know the woman. I have never given her one naira. Once in a while, she will just send me texts and say, my son, just know your mother is praying for you. I tell you, there are times I'll be trusting God, all decisions and her text just comes. Faithful people. They will never ask for money. They will never ask and say, when you get there, it's chop by chop. They, they, they see it as a ministry. To make sure you prosper i've seen people like that with all humility and by the grace of god one of such people is our daddy here i remember when um there was a time that you know we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here 
they they would ask about koinonia as he receiving their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in she said i will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land faithful men a pastor may have nothing but faithful men and i tell you he has more than assets he may not be able to play the keyboard well but he's faithful he will die with you are we together there are people who were once in this ministry today they have left some of them are abroad they are the ones spreading koinonia messages around i don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when I found it, I got it and I knew. Many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives. You are not sure of anybody close to you. They will laugh with you now. And when they turn, they can say crucify him. Let me tell you, no matter how careful you are, you cannot make men faithful by yourself. It will take a heart under God for them to vow and say, I love this man. I am loyal to him to death. There are people today, if they bring a gun to shoot, they will stand and receive that shooting for me. I know that. Not everybody, but there are people. You need that in your life. Because you are there Facebooking people, chatting with people and saying, you are my best friend, you are my best this. They will leave you. Let me tell you something, when the going gets tough. Because in every man's life, there are valleys. There are times of challenge. How many wives left their husbands simply because for one year, there was no money they packed their load and went how many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when I, when we are saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent. Send faithful men. Send faithful men. Hallelujah. Number six, please sit down. We're rounding up. The last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom. This is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10 verse 41 and 42 there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom listen i'm establishing the law of honor the law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing hear me there is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom results do not just happen there are graces that activate possibilities there is a kind of grace that brings influence. There is a kind of grace that brings wealth. There is a kind of grace that brings freshness. Are we together now? So that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor. That there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results. How you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations. When a result becomes consistent, there is a law and a grace at work. Number two, human beings are God's reservoirs of spiritual anointings. 
spiritual graces. God keeps his anointings in men, not in jars, not in Goya oil. They can just be prophetic contacts. But God's instruments, God's instruments for hosting his anointing. Listen, he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what? Look up. Did he say shall receive God's reward? There is something called a prophet reward. It's the reward that goes with his office. Are we together? It is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the God he serves and the office he represents. And it does not just mean a man of God. It's a law. Every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently, regardless of opposing forces, there is a grace making that. I have seen people in my life, they are not very wealthy, but they never beg. I don't know what kind of grace that is. The moment supplies are about to finish, something else comes. They never have one billion, but they never lack. If they need to travel abroad, someone pays for the visa. I've seen these people, very strange people. They kneel down and say, Lord, send help from Zion. And men are rushing. They will not bring one billion. They don't have 20 cars. They may just have one or two cars. But you will come to their house. You will never beg for bread. It's a grace. Are we together? When you see a ministry exploding in membership, there is a grace. When you see people moving from one dimension to the other, there is a grace. You can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters. Yet you find 10, 12, 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that. She can say, no, I'm in a relationship. You say, close that one and come to me. I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes. And you are wondering, come, my brother, is it that, is it that this lady is gold? He says, me too, I don't know. It's a grace. Are we together? That lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same. There are people, when they ask you something, you can't say no. You, you swear heaven and hell and say, this is the last time I'll give anybody this, this lantern. They just knock and say, Ejimi, please, can you help me with it? You stand up like a zombie and pick it. There is a grace. There is a grace. I have seen this. There is a grace that brings a healing anointing in a ministry. It's not just by faith. There are people who have these graces. Now listen to me please. Your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated. I wish what I were saying were a lie. I would have quietly apologized and just sat down. But this is true. It has changed my life. It is changing my life. It has changed this ministry. It is changing this ministry. The law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness. The law of honor. I used to think service was the cheapest route until I learned the law of honor. My goodness. You can quantum leap your destiny in one day. You can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor. It has worked in my life like a charm. The Bible says, He that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward the keys that made him what he is listen you can men are dimensional that you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions there is joshua selman the human being there is joshua selman the friend there is joshua selman the man of god are we together there is joshua selman the businessman there is joshua selman 
the whatever it is there is a dimension you have not seen if you only know me as a man of god you receive that reward if i become your friend you will have access to certain things that people will not have are we together if you come to see me in the capacity of a man of god you can sit down i will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of god but if you come as my friend when a jimmy comes to see me whatever i'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating he has he is not going to ask me we will even talk about it he wants more he can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take are we together because we are friends are we together but when we begin to talk we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry when i'm talking to my parents we can crack jokes but when i'm about to say something serious i switch because i'm talking to men who brought me to this world they have an anointing to speak over my life are we together you can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes but when i'm about to talk to him i talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries are we together now that's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones we don't let them just join the queue they sit down these things are communications of honor that's why we provide buses for you after the service it's not just that we have money to throw around no it is to honor you it's a law of honor because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing and most of those anointings we need it and so we honor you to receive it are we together now yes you want a car you see somebody who has a car you buy fuel you are receiving him in the name of a car owner you will get a car owner's reward you see someone in a relationship you don't keep gossiping about his relationship you package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say whatever made you get this good man whatever made you get this good woman you got this woman when you were not born again meaning it was not your effort this is grace i need it you sow into that life you are working someone is not working and you are saying is it teacher that i'll sow into you see so you never rise one day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes and he gets up and says ah, my roommate what is this for you say i didn't iron it as roommate i'm tired of joblessness i'm tapping into the grace that frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity out of the millions of jobless people you got a job how many barren people have honored those who have children they will criticize them hallelujah an anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor maybe the reason why you are grounded hear me i'm rounding up you saw a prayer grace in koinonia and you felt please these guys just pray too loud they just shout like idiots i like the excellence i like the word but the prayer and so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away because you ignore that grace it's called the spirit of prayer and supplication you saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor number one you must believe in god number two you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing you must not just believe in the person you must believe in the office the operation of that anointing i i pray for you that you get this we're about to pray but you need to get this for in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you lord i will reverence you lord i will reverence you lord for in your presence 
there is life everlasting I will reverence you Lord listen I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces not just in ministry I have I have I have honored them with my life I saw into different TV ministries because Koinonia will soon have their own TV ministry I never open my mouth and criticize anybody's TV ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon so I plant a seed of honor are we together now yeah I sow into the lives of people's children because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children I don't want my children begging for school fees begging for bread so I take care of other people's children that's why I don't kick children and throw them out here I take care of them let me tell you something do not be deceived God cannot be mocked whatsoever a man so well without fail except for the mercy of God he will receive it we have criticized people you have not started ministry Yet every man of God does not have Rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business. Yet you look and say, Kai, this guy, he's talking, talking, talking. It's as if he's by luck, except he built this company. Continue talking. No reverence for people's sacrifices. Let me tell you something. Behind every glory, there is a story. If you do not respect the story, and the glory you will never replicate it in your life never ever never ever there are people by the grace of god who i have never met eyeball to eyeball i've heard about them they have reproduced the grace upon my life verbatim every anointing you see is yours for the taking but the key is honor honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands let me tell you something Honor is not kneeling down, lifting your hands. You have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry. I don't know whether you believe it or not. There are many people who never believe it. So you will sit down with circles of disfavor. Whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of God. By the grace of God, everything we do in this ministry prospers. It's a grace. Have you tapped into it? Is it working for you? Listen. As a faithful person in this ministry, you should be a reflection, an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here. Don't let people come from somewhere. You see how people behave when they come from other places. Their hearts are open. They are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back. But many people just sit down. Koinonia, koinonia. And they enjoy. And after the grace, they stand up and walk away. Proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life it takes honor honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people me and Ejimi were watching a man of God one time and I looked at this man of God I said Kai this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth an uncommon grace he's not so fluent he's not even so intelligent you know that there are many business principles this guy does not know but there is there is an uncommon grace this guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. On common grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. 
Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. You receive it. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, the way God does his thing, self. That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray. Six laws I have given you. You will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket. You will, you will tame life like a chess. You know how people play chess. Life is not magic. It's not chance. As haphazard as it is, there is a synergy. There is a rhythm to life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you see everything I've been saying. It's one thing to hear what I'm saying, but it's another thing to see it. He says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower. Right? He said, and I will see what the Lord will say to me. Some of these things I share with you freely. I got them from my own mistakes. I got them through pain. I got them through sacrifice. But they are irrefutable laws. Bring any man for me. Walk these laws and watch Satan bow. Watch gates open by themselves. I don't care whether it's gates of finances. I don't care whether it's gates of health. I don't care whether it's gates of ministry, gates of business. There is nothing you are doing that has not been done before. Ask those who master this key. If he's setting up a company, you are not the first to do it. If it's marriage, you are not the first to do it. If it's barrenness, you are not the first to be barren. The day your light comes, that becomes your day of salvation. Something I have ignored. I used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me. There was a man of God that set me free. Just one revelation from him. I could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because I felt I had to be everything to everybody. And one day, one man of God delivered me. His name is Dr. Mike Modok. Just one statement. He said, never... Do to people what only God can do to them. Ah, that was it. That was my deliverance. I found out that I was becoming God to many people. So I was taking God's responsibility in the lives of so many people. And he was killing me. And I said, no, rather than being God, let me start leading men to God. And he gave me freedom. There are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious. You give them 20,000, they go and destroy it. You give them 100,000 for a business, they throw it. And you keep doing that. It's running the finances of your home. You are being God to them. Lead them to God. Teach them the principles. Give them access to responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. You can vow your way into a miracle by saying, Lord, I vow that if you give me a miracle, I will not be silent with it. Let me tell you, these are the kinds of prayers that God wants. Not a testimony that you brag around and make noise for yourself. You can vow your way into breakthrough and say, Lord, change my story and I must stand before your people to testify. Lift your voice and pray.
Take a paroto co pro sotopa. Take a take a co sotopra tira baba baba baba. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Wipe my tears and take the glory. Let them that have mocked your grace upon my life be put to shame through this testimony. God, how great thou art, you alone, mighty are your miracles, stand in all of your Before we begin to minister, please bring out your prayer request and hold it. We are going to pray for five minutes. If you have not written one, you can write one. Bring out your prayer request. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. We are going to pray. Let me tell you something. We have seen dramatic breakthroughs. It's a revelation that God gave. We are not just writing requests for nothing. People's destinies have changed. God has wiped the tears of families and individuals. Hallelujah. I'd like you to hold your prayer request and in one minute cry and say, Lord, everything, everything written must be turned to a testimony. Not some. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not too late to write. Those following online, make sure you have your requests. He said, make your request known. Make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, everything. 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 One by one. One by one. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, one by one, by the unction, the anointing that is in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep it down and lift your voice and everything you do not want to see in your life. Begin to release it to leave you right now. Before we pray, everything, everything, everything you are tired of seeing in your life.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Expect to be healed. Expect to be delivered. Let me tell you something. Deliverance is very powerful when it is done scripturally and is done biblically. Because it's a separation between men and the forces that cause their problems. There are forces that are responsible for the problems, the challenges in people's lives. There are, there are forces. There are forces. And in a few minutes from now, we are going to begin to pray. I tell you, fire will burn in this place. Fire will burn in this place. And no devil will be able to stand. There are people whose lives must change. That's why we came. That's why we came. That's why we came. That's why we came. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Every spirit responsible for my pain, you are under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Every spirit. Every spirit responsible for my failures, responsible for the limitation in my life. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everybody. Don't say anything, just lift your hands. Please, everybody, if you can. If you, if you are doing something that doesn't allow you, that's all right. But please lift your hand. Don't allow the devil cheat you this time, please. Don't allow the devil cheat you. When you hear me ministering, minister like this, is because I'm under the anointing of the Spirit. These are not things I'm doing of my own accord. It is the foolishness of spiritual things that produce results. Keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. The first set of people that God will step into right now are people that God is breaking. I'm seeing, I'm seeing God break delay. I'm seeing chains on people's legs. And the Lord said, just lift your hands and he will locate them by himself. So keep your hands up. Father, I have done what you have told me to do. Right now, inside and outside. Right now. Right now, inside and outside. I stretch my hands. Bring them out. Right now. Everyone whose feet has been chained. Kaparataka. Zeketekete repulsion. Bareketebo supaya. I unloose those chains now. I untie those chains now. I untie those chains. Right now, bring them out. The second overflow. God is touching a lady so dramatically. Delay, 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 delay. You can't stand the anointing tonight. You can't stand the anointing tonight. Oh, there is grace in this house to challenge every altar of delay that has tied down the lives and the destinies of people. You must go forward. You must go forward. You must go forward. You must go forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing altars on fire. And the Lord said it belongs to families. Lord, where are the families? Right now. Right now. Let the fire of God locate them. Right now. Where are these families? I stand by this anointing. And I command everywhere across this building. Every family under the siege of witchcraft. Every family under the siege of witchcraft. Fire comes upon that altar. 
fire comes upon that altar. God is saving people right now. The power of the Holy Ghost is at work in this place. You can't be the same. You can't be the same. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. God is doing a quick work. Only ladies, lift your hands. Only ladies, lift your hands. Please lift your hands. Ladies represent gates in the spirit. And there are destinies whose gates have been closed. Right now I'm about to speak. In the name of Jesus. Upon every lady here, upon every lady here, who the gate has been closed, I command right now, be open, be open, be open. Many of you will be surprised what will happen to you right now. Sisters, you represent gates, 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 young and old, young and old. May those gates be open now. 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 Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. lift your hands the Lord is showing me something very I've prayed about this in one miracle service there are people here whose destinies have been exchanged for others I pray right now wherever they are at least 40 people 40 people wherever they are right now I command a reversal I command a reversal. Fire, fire, fire falls upon people. Fire every destiny that has been exchanged in the realm of the spirit. Every destiny that has been exchanged in the name of Jesus. Every load you are carrying that is not yours in the name of Jesus, it returns back to the sender. Everything must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. I tell you, miracles are happening here. Mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles. Mighty miracles. All those out here, all the spirits tying down your destinies at the count of three, this is miracle service. They live now. I speak in the realm of the spirit. One, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out of them. Go forever. Release their destinies. Chains be broken. Release their destinies. Hi. 
lightning must come down And so all shall be broken You wear the victor's crown Hallelujah Let me tell you something No spirit will hide today The power of God is strong in this place To bring strange visitations Lift your hands everyone There are men it's not just that you are delayed. You are not even moving at all. I want to pray. And the prayer I'm praying now is an unction that will begin to move people forward. An unction that will begin to move people forward. But first, the strong man that has kept families down must be dislodged. Lift your hands. I pray right now. Whoever is under the influence of any spirit and any power that is causing any retrogression, and non-progress right now as i pray fire comes upon them in the name of jesus inside and outside take the fire now take the fire now take the fire now Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone they brought here. I don't know if the person has a mental problem or is mad. Is there someone like that? There's someone they brought like a mental problem. Mad? A mad person. Where is the person? Bring the person. It's time for a miracle. This is a mad person. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You are the crown. You are the crown. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You are the crown. You are the crown. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a man that they brought here. It's like he has a problem walking very well. Is there someone like that? It's like he has a problem walking very well. A man, I don't know if there's pain or is that he cannot walk completely. Is there such a person, please? We have to hurry up. I want us to finish in good time. Is there such a person? Hold on. Let me just, is there such a person? Outside. He can't walk. He can't walk. He's paralyzed. Huh? What? Who brought him? Come, come quickly, please. What's the situation? What's the situation? Sir. It's as loud as you. Joseph Reason, last week I visited him then at Kano with his wife. And they informed him in the village that he's paralyzed. This man is a policeman. Is he a policeman? No, we I'm seeing his cardigan for, from Kano. So we brought okay. the, the custom. I'm seeing him where. Okay. The What's wrong with him now? Presently now can he, he hear me? He can hear you, sir. He Oga, and he look at me. Can you hear me? No, no, hold on. Can you hear me? Where are you from? Yeah, from Kano, sir. Kano, you yes. came from Kano? Yes, yeah, sir. Look at me, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, look at me. Since when could he not walk? Wife, come, please. This is your husband for how long? This is almost a month now. But the leg is just two weeks now. The legs is two weeks? Yes. It's okay. I'm seeing stroke in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The first miracle is for him to hear what I'm saying. 
Something has affected his mind. He cannot even hear. Huh? He, can't even talk. he can't hear. He can't talk. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that deaf and dumb spirit to leave you. To leave you. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Can you he hear how, sir? Huh? Look at me. Can you look at me? Try to move your legs. Can you? Can you try to move your legs? Can you try to do what I'm doing? Try to move your legs. Talk to him that I want to pray for him. Who is this? That's all that is. Why are they here? Hold on, please. Uh, 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 uh. Let please. Only the case I call. Don't just. We are going to pray for people. What's wrong? What's wrong? This lady is mad. Yes. Since he, when? Yes. Who knows you, madam? Are, are you in Zaria here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Her case is mental. Yes, sir. They 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 decided to call hospital. Now get. They, they do. It's not like epilepsy. It is like epilepsy, so it affected her brain. You can imagine. Hold my hands. Father, I command that spirit to leave. Mad spirit, go now. You will let this girl go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her now. Out! Thank you, Jesus. Just lie her down, she's going to get up. Sir, I'm, I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing witchcraft because I'm looking at a man who is already dead, not even that he's dying. Somebody that they've already killed, he's already dead. Get a chair and keep him, let him sit down and you pray. What you guys will do is just try to talk to him. I need him to hear what I'm saying because I want him to lift his leg. Can he see me? Madam, you are his wife. You will, you will help us eh? and be talking to him. Give him a seat, please, so that we don't waste time. Daddy, you're welcome, sir. From where, sir? What's the issue? Who brought him out? I came with my neighbors. What's the issue, sir? Is the mic working? Is the mic working, Lawrence? His mic. Sir, can you hear me? I can hear Please you. come. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a problem. Um, have you gone to the hospital, sir? You've gone to the hospital. Yeah, who has glaucoma? It's me. You. You are yes. the one who has glaucoma. Yes, because I'm seeing a writing on your head and it's written glaucoma. Yes, sir. That you have glaucoma. Yes, sir. This problem started like eye problem. Yes, sir. Then it moved to your hands. Yes, and now it's on your leg. Yes, sir. And it's like stroke. Yes, sir. You will be healed right now. Amen. The Lord himself Amen. is going to perfect Amen. you. Amen. Daddy. Hold this mic. Shout. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. Now. Now. Stroke. So, live my life. Live my life. Blindness. Blindness. Live my life. Live my life. Now. now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Please come name. up and jump. Come. Come up. Come up. Come up. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Come. Walk. Also has an eye condition. Please look, sir. Can you see people? I can see people. Could you see them before? Yeah, but I can't recognize them. You can't recognize them. But now, can you recognize them? I can see them, but not fully recognition. Sir? Not fully recognition. No full recognition. The Lord has started something in his life. He could not, I mean, glaucoma and then down to stroke. You can see him still limping. Daddy, in the name of Jesus, you came with somebody. Where's the person? Who came with him? You are wearing a white scarf on your head. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Come. You are the one. Is this your father? No, sir. My neighbor. Your what? My neighbor. Oh, that is she's your neighbor. We are going to pray. And then God will bless you a thousand times. I'm going to pray for you. Daddy. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The power of the enemy. The power of the enemy. Over my life. Over my life. Will not die. Will not die. 
be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Please exercise yourself and go in your liberty. The Lord perfects your body in the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, I'm going to pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help her, please. In the name of Jesus. How can a, a lady like this, planning her life like any other person, now this girl is mad. You look at this. This is real madness. It's not like it's a child's play. Eh? She came back from the office on Monday. Then she started the She came back from the office she mad. Said, yeah. You see, let me tell you. Look at this. It's one thing to leave your house quietly. The Bible says there are arrows. She came back from the office where? On Monday. And then I heard just, can you imagine? You got up and went to work and came back mad. This is the world we live in. Are we together now? Let me tell you, wickedness is very, 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 very real. Very real. Very real. Mama, that woman in, on yellow, please come. I don't know you, but the Lord is saying that your joy needs to be restored. One. Two. Why am I seeing you? There's a line between you and that lady with red. This one holding your hands. What is the relationship between two of you? Come. He's my friend. She's your friend. You came together. Yes. I'm seeing a light left you and to her. And then the Lord is saying, I should pray for you because it's the same thing two of you are going through. We have to pray for you. Number one, your joy. Your joy needs to be restored. And then number two, your health. You are feeling pain in your stomach. I have to pray for you so that they will tell you five words. Mm -hmm. Madam, let me talk to you now. Did you tell me miscarriage? Because I'm seeing something growing. Huh? And it's paining you. And this thing will make you to be bleeding unusually. It's fibroid. You are bleeding unusually. And this thing is not just miscarriage. Because for the miscarriage, a man appears to you in the night. And once you see that man, the next thing is you have miscarriage. But we are going to pray. Madam, can I pray for you? Where are you from? Ben. Benway. Ben, I stay in Daraka. You stay in Daraka. Let me pray for you. Madam, the Lord needs to restore your joy because there are things I cannot say here, but one of your major requests is the fruit of the womb. Is that true? The fruit of the womb. And I see you even praying that if possible, let God give you twins. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And you are asking that the Lord will give you twins. Yes, sir. And I'm going to pray for you yes, because those twins will pray that God will give Amen. it to you. You believe it? I'm not a herbalist. Lay your hands on your stomach. We have to pray. There's a man that appears to you. This is demonic. In the name of Jesus and by the blood of the eternal covenant, I set you free from all this nonsense around your life. In the name of Jesus. Ma, I pray for you. You desire children, God will not just give you children, may he give you twins. In the name of Jesus. And that formation of fibroid in your body will cause it right now. You are feeling like fire is moving around your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ. A supernatural miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Ah, you are not married. Are you married? Um, because I, I wanted to pray the same thing and the Holy Ghost is telling me you are not married but you are about to marry there's somebody in your life he has engaged you eh? is that true? Yes. who is the person? He has engaged. is that true? you are engaged to marry so I, I have to pray for you Hi. my sister don't be offended though there's serious witchcraft in your family I'm seeing this witchcraft coming from where is Otuko? In eh? Benue State. What do you have to do with Otuko? There's one of my own people, but me, I'm from Otuka. Mm -mm. Just answer what I'm telling you. What do you have to do with Otuko? Who is there? He's my own. Father, in the name of Jesus, your marriage will be successful. Look at me. I don't know how you do this, but don't allow them to do anything on you that is demonic in the name of marriage. I'm seeing something that has to do with you and a tree. Just, I don't know what I'm saying, but be careful. In the name of excitement of traditional marriage, 
they initiate people into nonsense and rubbish. I pray that the Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Um, God wants to do a very spectacular miracle in this place right now. There is someone here you completely cannot see with your right eye. Completely cannot see with your right eye. But a miracle is going to happen right now. Completely cannot see with your right eye. Wherever that person is in the name of Jesus, I command that you begin to see with that eye now. I command that you begin to see with that eye now. I command that you begin to see with that eye now. Please check yourself very quickly. Check yourself very quickly. While we're doing that, there are, there are a number of people and when I pray for you, if you get healed and, you, and you, you find out that you're in that category, just come out quickly. Let's save time. I want to pray for people right now. I'm seeing people who have been having severe pain around the chest region, like your heart. Yes, some of you, when you wake up in the morning, severe pain severe pain the lord is healing those people right now right now please check yourself and if you see a miracle run out here there is a miracle happening to somebody right now check yourself severe pain are along the heart region miracles are happening right now right now as i speak only those who are healed of this miracle make your way to the front i see a miracle happening to somebody right now make your way to the front celebrate them they are coming celebrate them they are coming jesus is touching people your chest i see a miracle around the heart region very quickly please save our time jesus is killing people right now Vinonia, is this how you celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles the chest area Power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Check it right now. Is there any pain? Is there any pain? No, sir. Like, look at the boy, he's even crying. How long? Quickly, just testify one minute, quickly. Turn face the crowd quickly. Like, it's okay, you don't have to cry. Up to more than four years. The pain comes as if when I'm breathing. When you are breathing, you feel the pain. And right I'm now, breathing. check it, do what you couldn't do. Completely, no pain. In the name of Jesus, that miracle never returns to you again. Mama, any pain? Let's take a few tests. No pain. Completely. Completely. How long has it been? It has been there for years. For more than five, three years. More than five years. Yes, Please sir. check it now. We want you to confirm. Look at this. Look at this completely. The pain is gone. The anointing is even on her. Help her, please. Help her. How long, my dear? Please, those who have been healed, just come here quickly. We'll give you some. Just turn, face the crowd very quickly. Organize yourselves, please. Ushers, help them. How long has it been? What's your name and how long? About two years ago. How is the pain like? What is describing for us very quickly? As Don't worry. She's, she's after, just here. Be after patient. I eat, after I ate food, uh -huh. then I'll restore my Then you'll chest. be struggling your chest. Is, it, is there pain now? Mm -hmm. Is there pain? Check it. Make sure you are telling the truth. If you lie, we'll clap for you, but you are the one who will suffer. Praise God. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. All of you, all of you healed of that pain. Lift your hands. Let me pray for all of you right now. In the name of Jesus supernatural miracle it never returns 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 give jesus praise in the mighty name of jesus christ give jesus praise in the mighty name of jesus my goodness i just saw a spectacular miracle in the realm of the spirit there is someone here who has just been healed of pile please check it i want you to come and testify you'll be very surprised pile has just been healed right now right now supernaturally pile has been healed please if you can check yourself i would like you to check yourself let someone check you so that it is not a lie pile with intense pain and god is healing that person right now 
check yourself and when you check yourself please let me have the person come forward and then we'll come and testify and God will give you a dramatic 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 miracle pile make sure you check and let the person come out in the name of Jesus there is a lady at overflow too not the first one the other overflow um, your name is blessing your name is blessing please if there is such a lady like that can you quickly run before we start ministering to cast out every devil and pray for the sick God is touching people please the person with pile go and check yourself a lady with the name blessing you are wearing white white jack like sweater is there somebody like that blessing outside overflow too where is she coming from please always confirm where are you coming from the other overflow what's your name blessing where's where are you from hold my hands God is going to give you a miracle and he's also delivering your family your family needs deliverance huh your family needs deliverance hold my hands for God to have located you is because he loves you be set free right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I'm hearing the name of someone and you are my namesake your name is Joshua you are outside please come in you are outside come in God is bringing deliverance to this lady and her family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ a supernatural miracle God is bringing deliverance for her family they will never be the same there are four of you that are supposed to be here with this name four of you please stand here all of you <laughs> hallelujah I'm going to pray for you come God is going to use you huh? God is going to use you mightily I'm going to pray for you my friend you, you love God but God needs to help you Huh? Do you hear how, sir? Kajiko? Mm, you have bad friends. We are going to pray for you. Huh? In the name of Jesus, sir, look at me. God is going to help you. Who is a trader in your family? Mother. Eh? My mother. What does she trade? My mother. God wants to change her story. Amen. Hold my hands. You are going to start having strange revelations and an anointing is going to come upon your life. Right? As I'm speaking to you now, an angel of the Lord, you'll feel something like a crown being put on your head. It's a mantle. It doesn't mean you should just go and start ministry. But it's to tell you that God will use you very mightily. Father, confirm your word in his life. It will never be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell your mother that a prophecy has come for the family that God is about to lift the family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? and you look like an ordinary person but you are going to hold a lot of money in your hand there is an unction there is grace for finances upon you there is grace for finances upon you where's Ejimi please he's going to go let him lay his hands on you there's grace for finances that will come upon you and you will never be the same I have to pray for you you love God but you are in here you are out here you have bad friends come follow me your friends are not good people. Where are you? Where are you? You are in Samaru here? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You love God? Yes, sir. Is it too much of a price to leave your bad friends? It's too much. Ah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray because God wants to use you as a savior to your family. Are we together but you see hold on please let me talk to you if you really want to be great in life it doesn't matter whether you grew up with the same people you must have the courage to tell some people I love you I'm not I don't have a problem with you but since you are not just going my direction let me tell you you can't play games with God and, and, and you, God is not a herbalist that you pray abracatabra with. If you are serious with God, then go for him. Are we together? I love you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that every spirit of rebellion will live your life. In the name of Jesus. There is, hmm, this is, this is, 
I don't know why God is giving me this kind of instructions here. Please don't feel embarrassed. There are two boys and one lady. Two gentlemen and one lady here. You need to be prayed for. You have an uncontrollable appetite for stealing. Please, don't be embarrassed. Ordinarily, I would not ask you to go out. There are two of them. It's not like you're a bad person. Anything you see, you must carry. One lady and two guys. Please come out. We're just going to give one minute. There are so many things we need to do. This is a revelation God is giving me. Please, this is a family of faith. We're not saying you're a thief. But this has brought so much trouble to you. Please, whether you are inside or outside, don't be embarrassed. There is a lady in this list and there are two gentlemen wherever you are please as you hear the word of the lord make your way to the front you need to be delivered you have tried to stop using willpower it's an addiction you don't use willpower to end supernatural things make your way to the front and i'll be glad to pray with you make your way there's somebody like that i'm i want to pray for this guy but god is saying i should wait for that case there's somebody like that let's celebrate him you are the one there's one more gentleman and a lady one more gentleman and a lady please there's nothing to be ashamed of this is a family of faith please very quickly just one minute there's there's so many other things we have to do sata stealing no matter what happens you can't stop it Where's the other brother? Please don't delay us. It doesn't take time to know you have this problem because it's a challenge that you've been trying to solve. Let me tell you something. You see, Ba, these things are spirits. It's not whether you are a thief or not. If it comes upon you, it will make you act that way. You may not even use what you are carrying, but you will still carry it anyway. Please, where is the last person? Don't delay us. Let's pray. Come, let me pray for you before I pray for them. The last person, quickly, summon the courage to come and join them very quickly so that I can minister to you. The Lord will anoint you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's restoring your family. Huh? Where are you from? I don't know why God is visiting Benway State today. Where are you from? From Benway State. God is visiting Benway people in very strange ways. It's like the miracle service is for Benway people. Benway people. There's a lady self from Benway who is going to be under the anointing now. As a testament of this thing I'm saying. Hi, this God. I don't know. I don't know. This is my God. Make sure she's from Benway. Where is she from? No, 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 no. Don't, don't worry. Don't feel embarrassed, my dear. I love you and I'm very proud of you. Right? Look at me. Can you go? Come. You love God, but there's one boy around you. Send him a text this night that Joshua Selman said he should never come around you again. Hmm? Don't feel bad. This, this, I'm not, I don't hate people, but number one, this boy is a, is a small boy. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Two, um, please, there are things I cannot say here. Huh? Are you ready for a child now? Huh? Yes. She's saying yes. Uh, no. Okay, well, who knows? I mean, Mary was 14 years when she had Jesus. So, please, but on a, on a serious note, huh? you love God, you are a serious lady, but there's something on you that makes bad boys. Bad boys, the moment they see you, you look at them, you look at their eye, you know that they are not serious Christians and they keep coming to you. But there's one that's been disturbing you. Send him a text and say, Joshua Selman said, please, please, he, he should come for, bring him for Koinonia next week. Let God help him. Yes, instead of driving him, let God help him. Are we together? So I'm going to pray for you. Listen, there are many more people who are bigger thieves that have refused to come out. Are we together? So don't ever be embarrassed. You see, when you ever point one finger at people, make sure that others, be sure that others are pointing at you. I want to pray for you so that you will be free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen.
Where is our Benway lady? Careful, please bring her. I want to use her to speak a prophetic word. There was a time it was Kogi, right? Remember. So today God has decided, hold my hands. No, 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 the other hand. I want to pray. Watch what happens now. It's called signs and wonders. These ones are not miracles. They are signs and wonders. They are faith boosters. The Lord is with this lady visiting Benway people right now. Visiting Benway people right now. Right now. God is visiting Benway people. Those altars now. Now. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Every territory of Benway that has tied the lives of people down. I hold this lady as a point of contact. Inside and outside. The anointing of God will fish them out. By power. I command those altars. Those altars. You come under siege tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. Listen, you will watch all these people come to testify. They may not even know what is happening to them. You are not just falling for nothing. And you don't even have to fall for it to show that something is happening in your life. But there are visitations that God is giving people. Grace in your life and your family. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. I command that spirit to leave you forever. No appetite for stealing. Not only is God delivering you from stealing, lust leaves you now. In the name of Jesus, every lost leaves you now in the name of Jesus. My brother, I command a miracle for you right now. Give me your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody here. You stole fuel. You stole fuel. And this thing brought a problem, but you kept quiet. It's a spirit. God wants to set you free. Please don't feel embarrassed. Fuel, like um, fuel, PMS. I don't know if it's, you know, fuel for something. I don't know what it's for. But you, you found yourself stealing that fuel to do something with it. I don't know what it's for. Please, I want to pray for you. Because the person you took that thing from pronounced a curse. Are we together? Please. That's why I want to pray for you. We have to pray right now and then I'll, I'll minister to the sick. Please. If there is such a person, I want you to come out or maybe someone you know. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You're seeing us praying for people. You stole fuel. It may not be that you are a bad person. You see, fundamentally, people are not bad. Situations, pressures, and spirits make people act in certain ways that may look disdainful and embarrassing. You must be spiritual to be able to love people in spite of their flaws. Are we together? There's somebody like that oh. There's somebody like that. The Holy Ghost is still speaking to me. There's somebody like that. Please have the courage to come forward as we begin to pray. Don't meet me after the service. Please. There is grace and unction to pray for you right now. This has to do with fuel that you carried. I don't know whether you sold it or you gave it to someone or something like that. But then we have to pray for you. 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 Everyone lift your voice. No, God is saying I should stop till the person comes out. Who is the person, please? My brother, look at me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, embarrassing you, right? Is the flesh that causes this embarrassment. But you see, when God shines light on you, it's not unto condemnation. Are we together? He said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. So we're not people who come and embarrass people and condemn them. The person you took the foil put a curse upon you. 
and the cause is that nothing you enter will stay in your hand and that's what I want to take away from your life that's why I brought you out are we together now in the name of Jesus Christ it took a man to pronounce this cause be free now by the power of the Holy Ghost I command that it leaves you forever 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 I take away that pronouncement from your life in the name of Jesus you love the Lord with all your heart and you walk in his ways God bless you please stand up and go hallelujah I'm about to minister to the sick right now very quickly and while I do, you can you can just bring the lady to front I'm still praying for her hallelujah sister talk to her sister my dear look at me look at me how are you how are you are you fine what's wrong with you you don't know that's how she has been oh that's how she behaves she hears you yes, she, she actually is. hears you when you speak but she won't be able to respond do you know why she's not wicked she's under bondage and we're going to pray for her right there's a reason why i ask you to keep her here i keep laying my hands on her from work she came back i'm praying i don't know who did this thing but in the name of Jesus, as he's leaving you, it will land on that person's head. <laughs> Some of you don't like the prayer I'm praying. I say it again. Whoever brought this, it must land on the head of the person. It's because they didn't do it to your sister or to your brother. That's why you leave your office and return mad. What if she's the breadwinner of her family? That whole family has come under siege. Let me pray before we, let me prophesy to you before we pray. In the name of Jesus, any human agent who has partnered with the realm of the spirit to bring the pain in your life, I pray this night is a night of judgment for them. This night is a night of judgment for them. I say it again. This night is a night of judgment for them. This night is a night of judgment. I command judgment for them. I command judgment for them. Shake it, 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 it. Judgment for them. Judgment for them. Any human agent, I say it, responsible for your pain. I command judgment for them. While we ask the sick people to come out, please, if you came here trusting God for healing, now is your moment. While they are doing that, please, let's have all the prayer requests. Just something has happened to her. Just carry her and put her aside somewhere. Make your way to the front quickly. Please organize yourself. Now is the time for healing. Very quickly. While they are doing that, please, all of you, write your request. Listen, hold on. Please. I allow you to switch off your switch on your phones if you need to and call your loved ones to forward their request for you. Please, you can type it quickly and send it here. It's not enough that you've written your request. Please, if you even know the requests of some others, you can write it and put their names because we are going to pray for those requests. Hallelujah. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. Help me. You perform miracles. There is nothing. That is possible. And we're standing here. Only One more time. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. Your power, you perform me. There is nothing that's impossible.
Worship team, you are going to help us. Look how many people have come to be healed. I thank God because God has found a place where he can communicate his healing power to his people. Now, we are going to be very, very fast. This is not for the rest of us to be distracted. Everyone, you should be writing your prayer request and you should be praying. Because after this session, there's going to be a massive impartation. There is, there is need for grace and unction for us. And so we're going to pray. Jimmy, please come help me. We're going to be praying for the sick. Please, listen. It doesn't matter who prays for you, whether myself or Ejimi, there's a corporate anointing, okay? So we're praying for you. Um, the moment they pray for you, don't leave one line and come and join another one. Just a touch. You don't even have to say what is wrong with you. If we ask you, that's all right. If we don't, please. If there's a prophetic word, you will be giving. If you are not giving any word, some of you, when I touch you, you now get angry because I didn't prophesy. Look, let me tell you something. This thing, you don't do it just the way you want to do. At least not for me. Are we together? So, you, it has, if there is no word for you, just believe. And then when hands are laid on you, don't just go back to your seat smiling. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. If you have to go to the hospital, then you should go to the hospital for test. Are we together? And if there are still people sitting down and not coming out because of the crowd, please make sure you join them. There is a reason why we lay hands like this. I don't do this in other meetings, but then so that we can make contact. Worship team, help us do the best you can. God bless you. Father, let there be miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on, hold on, please. How many months pregnant are you? Eight months. We have to pray. I'm seeing them cutting you. CS, but we have to pray for you. They gave me the list. They gave you the list. Do you believe God can turn things around? Yes. Cry. There is a God that we serve. Immediately I looked at you. I saw them cutting you with a knife. Huh? Don't cry. I don't know what the doctor said, but in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, there will be a miracle for you. The baby will adjust to his normal position and he will come out the way he should come out like the Hebrew women. In the name of Jesus Christ. A supernatural miracle is happening to you right now in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Go ahead. God bless you. you when I pray for you, go back to your seat in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed right Don't now. Know how, but you did it. Heal now. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test. Miracle for you. Name of Jesus, healing for me. Nothing Mirror. can catch you by surprise. You got this figured out, and you're watching us now. And when you look as if we can win, you wrap the sea in your arms and step in. And everything we need you supply You've got this in control Now we know that you've made a way When a box were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, you made Standing here breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. You, you came for it, breakthrough. Way. You are entering the realm of breakthrough, supernatural breakthrough, not just healing, but breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost. I open the doors right now in the name of Jesus. She's carrying a child, please. Only because you made and we're standing here. Carry the baby, please. Only because you made. We're standing here only because please, if someone if someone is backing a baby as they are laying hands on the person, ushers, please help so that you move the mountains. Uh -huh. Lord, you move the mountains.
Jesus. Lord, you move the mountains. You move the world. You move with your power. With your power. Lord, with your power. Hallelujah. Everyone serve time in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. The meeting is still on. In the name of Jesus, I declare that every power that wants to stop my testimony, the Lord rebuke you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. You are doing yourself good when you are praying. You are doing yourself good when you are praying. You must testify. They're singing that every power, every high thing must come down. So you pray. Let her go now. Out! 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 Go! Are you praying? turn to testify in this season and every power that will stop me from testifying I come against it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah self time in the name of Jesus come on shout it inside and outside in the name of Jesus every legal access that the devil has over my life and over my family by the blood of Jesus that access is broken lift your voice and pray 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 every access please make sure you are praying this is part of the meeting Every legal access the devil has over my life by the blood of the eternal covenant, by that which Christ has done on the cross, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, my door to the next level, hear the word of the Lord. Be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Command that door to open. The access point to the next level of my life and destiny. I command you to be open. I command you to be open. Revelation 3 verse 8. I have set before you an open door. 
No man can shut it. Are you praying? Shake it, take it, take it, take it, break it, take it, reckless. Break it, take a lot of other books. Man, break it, take a lot of other books. Ente braska la bariketesh. Siketi la 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 books. Rapa kaparoto sopre gere la la la. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. And break it, take it. On your feet as well. Stretch your hands on this prayer request. Lord, it must be turned to a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. I'm praying on your request. There is a covenant of answered prayer in this house. We invoke that covenant. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing which is gone from from my lips. Shake it, take it, take the box. Break it, take it, toss it, break it, and break it. Shake it, take it, man, break it, toss it, break it, break it, take it, take it, take it, and toss it, toss it, break it. Lord, have respect for the covenant in this house. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Supernatural miracles. Breakthroughs. 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 Shepo koto pekete. Eke te te to shoto koto. Maka tapa kata rekete. Rekoto so pekete kate kate. Miracle so God. Miracle so God. Hallelujah. Join me, shout a loud amen in the name of Jesus. Is that the best in the name of Jesus? The Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Parakatakata. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every request that has been dropped before the God of heaven, we turn it into a testimony now. We turn it into a testimony now. Be turned into a testimony now. Be turned into a testimony now. Between now and the next miracle service, strange answers, strange answers, strange answers, strange answers. The way I'm walking upon this prophetically, in the name of Jesus, that's how you will walk upon every challenge. I step upon it prophetically. Everything that has mocked God, as I step upon it, as help them please, as I step upon it by prophecy, I decree in the name of Jesus that that's how you rise above the challenges. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There will be a drastic impartation here right now. Just five minutes and we're done. Drastic impartation. Listen, the anointing that is coming upon you is 
an anointing upon your gift it's time for what you carry to speak lift your hands everyone in the name that is above all names at the count of three my god a massive impartation one two three take it take it take it receive that impartation upon your gift that impartation all over this building is yours for the taking it's yours for the taking produce results produce results produce results hallelujah listen the unction for supernatural results in the name of jesus that your results are not ordinary i stand by this apostolic and prophetic office and i command at the count of three let it fall like rain supernatural results one two get ready three take it take it take it take it supernatural ministry supernatural business supernatural family oh, oh, oh. help me Of results you have not seen in your life your business and your ministry I prophesy to you go and produce that result from today go and produce that result from today from today I prophesy it I program it upon your spirit go and catch fire Whatever has refused to work in your life, you have tried and tried and it has refused to work. By this unction tonight, we force it to work in the name of Jesus. Hear me? All those trusting God for jobs, you have done everything you know to do, the door is not opening. In the name that is above all names, go and get your miracle job. Go and get your miracle job. Go and get your miracle job. Every family going through stress and tension. You don't even know what to do. I pray right now. The force responsible for the pain in your family. Tonight, judgment upon them. Judgment upon them. Judgment upon them. Judgment upon them. Hear me? Every idea, every concept you need to rise to the next level of your life, I pray for you. In your dream, in your sleep, through visions, may those ideas be revealed to you. Help them, please. I want to pray for students now. The kind of exams you have never written in your life, the kind of CGPA, the kind of breakthrough, take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Take it now. Take it now. Hear me. Every spirit that makes you blank when you are writing exams, it comes under fire now. It comes under fire now. Whoever is holding your breakthrough, the key to the next level of your life, 
in the name of Jesus between now and the next miracle service they must look for you I prophesy it they must look for you hear me you will not look for them they will find their way and look for you I pray for you everyone here who has developed his gift what you need is for God to send those who have what it takes to honor it I pray for you listen hear me there is a way you can preach before men who don't need your grace they will rubbish your ministry and make you look like an idiot there is a way you do business in the presence of those who don't even have what it takes to value what you carry but I'm praying for you there is an unction that directs men only to those who can pay for what they carry Rabbi, help him help him help him help him help him help him in the name of Jesus that grace may that anointing direct you right now right now right now right now right now right now everything that has refused to grow here whatever God has given you that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names I command it to grow now I command it to grow now I command it to grow now let me speak over your finances many of you have given many of you have sown seeds but the harvest is being trapped somewhere I pray for you the force that releases the harvest of men I command that force to be at work for you now 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 hallelujah whatever covers your glory for men to see and bless you you are walking physically but it's Ichabod the glory is covered as a young lady you are beautiful but there's nobody to say I want to marry you I command that fail covering your glory be open now be open now be open now be open now arise shine arise shine arise shine hallelujah two more prophetic words and we're done it says and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way in this season you need direction everything is not the way to go hear me please hear me there are people right now your bailout is to know what God wants you to do that he told you to do it yesterday does not mean he's still saying do it you need a fresh instruction I open your spiritual ears your sense of perception your sense of perception your sense of discernment be open now be open now finally I pray for you everything that is upon this ministry is supposed to show in your life so if there is honor honor is when God positions men who discern what you represent and openly celebrate it it's called honor honor is not something you lobby for it's not a political position he said you shall call the sons of Aaron and you shall take some of your honor and give them Joshua sorry I want to pray for you listen do you know what honor is let me tell you the truth honor is better than money money can give you things 
but it may not give you honor honor is when men can rise up and fight for you because they want to preserve what you represent it's called honor he says and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren there are people who do not have honor in their life let me tell you how you know there is no honor in your life there is no helper honor is when men can stand before you and say before you touch him you must touch us honor when a ministry does not have honor you beg for everything you pay for everything you explain everything honor is when men God puts men at the gates to plead your cause you are there praying and somebody is clearing any bad air about you any bad impression about your ministry there is always a voice to say no the hand of God is upon them it's called honor I pray for you what has made you fight alone when things go wrong you explain alone nobody to help you listen this is not about prosperity this is about the ministry of men I have seen this in my life there is such a thing called the gift of men where God will raise men strangely everywhere you go that there must always be a man to advocate for you it's an unction otherwise whenever things go well or go wrong you pay for it by yourself whether things go bad or things go well you pay for it it's because that honor is not there are we together lift your hands i want to pray for you receive that prayer from the depth of your spirit because it will change your life the grace that god has put by covenant upon this house he said that i he entered a covenant with david that there will never be a man the throne will never lack a man i pray for you at every point of your life those who must arise for you i bring them into your life through the mantle of honor through the mantle of honor may that anointing come upon you now let it come upon you now in your going out in your coming in be honored be honored listen everywhere you enter that grace that distinguishes men let it come upon you Hallelujah. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Yeah. Jesus, we lift up your name. Give us five minutes, please, everyone. No moving around. There are people here who need to give their lives to Christ. Hear me. The Bible says that this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life and that this life is in his son. Please pay attention, concentrate, no moving around. It says he that has the son has eternal life. There are two groups of people right now. I want you to rush out here quickly. Those who have never committed their hearts to Jesus. You have never at any point in your life surrendered totally. I don't care how many times you have come for altar call. You have not made a genuine decision for Jesus. Number two, there are those who have given their lives to Christ. But the pressures and the vicissitudes of life have pushed you to a point where you have derailed in your walk with God. And you are saying, man of God, I need restoration. Wherever you are, please don't waste our time. Our time is gone. The Lord is calling you right now and I want you to make a genuine commitment. Rise up and walk to the front right now. Rise up and walk to the front right now. Inside and outside. God bless you. People are coming. God bless you. People are coming. Please clear the way for them. Run like there's fire on the mountain. In all the overflows. All those following us online, you may not be able to come out, but prepare your heart to make this prayer with us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Go ahead and say, today is the day I will make a decision for Jesus. There are still people God is asking to come out. Don't be ashamed. Make your way to the front. No matter what you have done, there is a new beginning for you. You're deserving of more. You're deserving of more. You're deserving of more. 
You're deserving of more. You're deserving of more. You're deserving of more. Thank you so much for answering this call. I'd like you to lift your right hand to heaven. If you are still joining them, please make your way. It's not too late. We're not reciting a poem. This is a serious prayer that will determine your eternal destiny. Say after me very clearly. Say, Lord Jesus. Those online followers, say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I believe you died for me and you shed your blood for my sin. This night, I accept you as my Savior and I receive eternal life into my spirit. The power of sin and Satan is broken over my life forever. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm saved. I'm born again. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. Nobody can come except you draw them. I pray that this that they have done as simple as it looks. Oh God, I pray that this will be the reason for them to not only spend their eternal destiny with you, but to live victorious lives here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, every power of the flesh of sin of Satan is broken over your life. From today you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for making this most noble prayer. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They will have your details and they will, will communicate you in due course. God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia, very quickly. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.